Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Pay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth. And this is not going to be one of my typical booktube videos, but I will relate it back to a particular portion of my book collection and a couple of the books that I have read recently and in the past. And it's a topic that I have brought up in a couple of recent videos and a handful of you have expressed interest and I thought I would just go ahead and do a video about it. So in my lifetime, which is a sum total of 57 and a half years, I have struggled with organization. And I joke that I hoard books on decluttering and that's not untrue. I do have a shelf and a half of books about decluttering and time management and home organization and I love reading them. I have read a lot of what I have and I have several that I have not read. I have some that I have reread and they're books that I usually hang on to because I enjoy having them. I enjoy reading them and I do reuse them for reference and it's just kind of fun to say that I hoard books on decluttering to be frank, <laughs> but I thought today I would just chat about my recent reboot because every so often, every couple of years or so, I get to a point in my life and my home organization and or disorganization when I just have to stop and say, okay, something has to change because I will go along pretty good for a while and then eventually my old habits start to come back. Not everything. I have been able to maintain a few good routines and habits that I have maintained for many years. And each time I do one of these reboots, I do get a few things that will stick with me. And I just keep hoping that as I go along, I will continue to improve and it makes it worthwhile. And during those times when I am in a reboot, my house does get cleaner and it does get better. And that's important. Even if it doesn't stay clean, it's important for it to get clean at least for a little while. Some of you may disagree with me, but I, I have to believe that that's true. So recently I have read, um, some of the books by Pam Young and Peggy Jones. I just read this one in May, and it's called Get Your Act Together. And then in April, I read Sidetracked Home Executives. This, I think, is their original edition. I own a newer edition, and I may reread it in this edition, but it's I flipped through it, and it is pretty much the same. I think they have updated it and tweaked it a little bit. Now, I picked these up at library sales because I had read several years ago the Fly Lady book called Sync Reflections. And I have continued to try to maintain some of the Fly Lady systems over the several years, many years that I have, um, you know, since learning about her and reading her book. But I don't do them all. They all don't fit me, and some would fit me if I would just do them, so <laughs> it's it's always a struggle with me. Let me give you just a little bit of a background. Now, I grew up in Oklahoma on a 250-acre farm that my parents named Slowpoke Ranch. Our cattle band was a turtle. My dad's nickname was Slowpoke, and we were late just about everywhere that we went, and I have grown up being socialized to be late, much to my mother's chagrin, but even she <laughs> began to sort of adapt some of those, you know, hard to get places on time practices. But it was really my dad that was the person behind the, the issues. And she told me one time long after his death that he had made the statement after he got done with the Marine Corps in World War II that because he was always, you know, told, hurry up, get, you know, get here, get there, do this, do that. He was not ever going to let anyone ever again tell him to hurry up and do something. He was going to live his life at the pace he wanted to live. Now, of course, you can't hold down a job and do that. But I think that that was difficult because he had made that declaration for so long. In fact, he did 
changed jobs a few times before I came along. Now, by the time I was born, he was pretty well established as a school teacher. He did not start teaching at the school in my hometown until a few years after I was born, or maybe around the time that I started school, maybe a little bit before. But through all of my growing up years, he was a school teacher. And it was hard, though, because my parents were every day struggling to get to school at the time that they were supposed to be there. So it's been you know, it's been an experience. And in my adult life, it's been hard to get places on time. It has been hard to stay organized because my mom was, for all intents and purposes, a collector or a saver of things. I don't want to say hoarder. I hate that word. But she had a lot of stuff. And as a result, when she passed away, we had a lot of stuff to go through. And I am still going through some of it that I brought back to Florida. Now, a lot of it has some great resale value on eBay, and I'm really excited to get to some of it and sell it. But I have some treasures that I don't want to sell. I want to keep because they are treasures. They remind me of my mom, and I'm happy to have them. But <laughs> all of that contributes to the mess. It really does. And I'm sure that you can figure that out. So without going into any more history of that... I want to just tell you about what I'm doing right now to get my life together and to reboot my plan of work and my organizational system. So I, a couple of years ago, uh, retired from a job with a theme park here in Central Florida. I don't usually say the name. It's not important. It's a big one. And I worked there for over 30 years. And when COVID hit, it it was just going to be my best option to retire because I was old enough. I had enough hours in. So that left me at home and my oldest daughter, who has special needs, once she graduated, um, her she was class of 2020, she did some e-school, and then we made the decision not to send her back to school in person, even though as an adult, she can attend for three years. So I'm home with her, and my husband had several years ago, started an eBay store. Uh, his father is, has been an eBay seller for many years, and um, my husband wanted to give it a try, but he still works full-time. And he was, you know, after several years of just doing it here and there, he was about ready to quit. And I said, hey, why don't I take it over? And then whatever money I make, we can use that to renovate the kitchen. You guys have heard that part of the story um, recently. So that is what I've been doing. Well, once I took over the eBay store and I said, okay, I'm going to list five things a day. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Then came the temptation to purchase more things at yard sales to resell. And I have done very well with some of that. I still have plenty of things, though, that I have purchased to resell and things of my mom's that I need to resell that have not even been dealt with. So I need to... First of all, stop bringing more things home until I get, you know, until I get a handle on what I have to sell. And I have to figure out how to keep up with the day-to-day -day life chores and manage a home-based business and, you know, do what I need to do to help take care of my daughter who's home and get a good meal on the table at least four or five nights a week. So all of that together is a lot for someone like me who is what I would really consider a free spirit as far as organizing goes. It is very hard for me to stick to a structured schedule, but I thrive under that. I really do if I make myself do it. <laughs> So I'm somewhere in the middle of not wanting to be so structured and at the same time realizing that I need it to a certain extent as long as I give myself a few times or per week or per day that I can just sit back and put my feet up and do what I want. So a, kind of an interesting thing happened when I was visiting my sister back in early April because she has always managed to stay on time. And I don't know if she has come by it naturally 
or if she just determined at an early age that she was not going to be late and not going to let that influence from our parents make her be late, like my brother and I have sometimes done. So she likes to structure everything down to the minute. When she plans a vacation, she knows exactly how long it's going to take her to get from one place to the next, where they're going to stop for um, a motel at night, how long they're going to spend at each of these different attractions that they're going to go to. I can't do that. You guys know, if you saw my vlog, I am just hopping from town to town. I'll get there when I get there and I'll enjoy what I want to see and I'll spend as much time as I want to while I'm there, even if it takes me a few extra days. You know, if I have the extra time and I don't have an actual deadline I have to meet, I'm going to expand that trip to fit whatever time frame is allowed. And my sister's not like that at all. So when I was with her and we went to a bookstore, I totally lost track of time. She said that we were there, I think at the time I was still going through books. We had been there two to two and a half hours. And I was like, really? Have we been here that long? Because the time had just flown for me. And she was thinking, oh, we need to hurry and get some lunch. I got to get home. I still got stuff to do. And I got to do this and that. And if we're going to stop at these two more places, we got to go, <laughs> you know? And I, and I said to her... Do you ever just let yourself just relax and say, I'm just going to do this for as long as I want to? And she's like, no, I got too many things to do. So that's how we're very different. But I admire her so much for that ability to get things done in the amount of time that she has allotted for it. So anyway, <laughs> I've kind of gotten off track, but I knew when I got home that I needed to make some changes. And I was looking at my shelf over here of books on decluttering, and it made me realize that I had not read either of these books. And I've been watching Fly Lady a little bit on YouTube. She's got some regular live streams. I think she does um, one or two a day. And I've been watching that a little bit and thinking, you know, I really do need to get my life in order again. <laughs> so I, I read this and I, I didn't think at the time that I would want to do the three by five card system, but in the end I did, I went ahead and got me a little box and some cards and I have done a, a, a portion of their system. Probably not exactly like they recommend. In fact, I know it's not exactly. But I'm going to show you my card system. And also the parts of the Fly Lady system that I have maintained. And it's in a separate notebook. Now, this book is a mess. And one of these days I'm going to have to just go through and clean out the whole thing. <laughs> this used to say Fly Journal. <laughs> and I um, have not kept up with all parts of this book. But... I'll show you when we get into my dining table the part of it that I did update and I'm still utilizing that. So I also have a planner. I've never been really good at planners, but I do have one and I try to use it some and you know, it's I'm a work in progress, y'all. <laughs> And so is my system. I don't claim to be an expert on anything. I just thought I would, it would be fun to do this video and show you what I'm doing right now and what's working for me. And if it helps any of you, great. If you look at me and go, oh my goodness, I'm sorry. But this is just what's working for me. So uh, before I go to the table and show you my, um, my cards and my notebook, in case you're interested, let me just take a second or two to uh, pan my shelf and a half of organizing books. Since I've been referring to my collection, I, it's been a while since I've done any kind of a shelf tour. And I will show you those and then I will meet you back at my kitchen table where I will show you my cards and my fly journal. Okay, so these used to be fairly well organized by author. They've maybe gotten a little bit messed up. Uh, there's another half a shelf here, but let me get a little closer 
and show you, actually, I'm going to turn the camera the other way. Yes, that's better, where I can show you the whole spine. All right, the one on the very end by Cassandra Arson is probably my newest one. I got that for Christmas of 2020, and I read it during the year 2021 and worked through it. It's a workbook, and I did really enjoy it. I can't think of anything specific that I have maintained from it. But probably if I went back through it, I there probably are some things. Um, I have several books by Don Aslett. Now, he is probably the first author that I ever read that had anything to do with organizing and cleaning. This is my first book, and I have read this multiple times, Clutter's Last Stand. It's so fun. I don't even know where I got that book, but I love it a lot. He is a cleaning expert. I don't even know if he's still living, but his books were mostly written back in the 80s, and I have just really enjoyed everything that I've read by him. So I've read a couple of the Emily Barnes books. This one you can't see, but this is a really old one. I hate to housekeep book. I got that, I think, at a library sale somewhere. Some of these books I have bought new. Some I got on Book Outlet. Some I've gotten at book sales, library sales. And I just have a good collection. I have several by Sandra Felton. I have read several of hers. I've reread a couple. Those are really good. She's known as the organizer lady, I think is what she calls herself. And she's got a group called Messy's Anonymous, I think. Is that what it's called? It's been a while since I've read one of hers. Um, Barbara Hemphill, I've seen speak in person. Um, and also Kendra Smiley, I have uh, met her and seen her speak in person. Anyway, there's several here, and then these are really not in any good order, but I have a few here, about a half a shelf, and there's a few that are not necessarily home management, but they are just various things to do with time management, or I don't know, it all kind of is relative. Um, there's the Marie Kondo book, which I've listened to on audio. Anyway, that is my collection, and now I'm going to meet you at my dining table to show you my cards and notebook. So y'all, please forgive the state of my notebook here. Uh, fly Lady recommends what she calls a control journal. Now, I called mine a fly journal simply because I don't like to use the word control because it makes it seem like this book would be controlling me, and I'm a control freak. I want to control the book. I don't want the book to control me, so I called it a fly journal. And I just basically put some of the printouts from the Fly Lady system in here, and I didn't really refer to much of these except for the morning routine. And I have done pretty good to establish the morning routine. A couple of other things I put in here later. This was from the Total Mom system. I uh, can't even remember the name of that author. Hannah Keeley, maybe? I have her book. You may have seen it on the shelf there. These were, I think, some menu plans, which uh, are now actually... Just a weekly planner. I don't know. I put some in here, a yearly planner, but I never really did anything with them. What I did adopt from the Fly Lady system that I really like is a daily plan that I would repeat from week to week. So before I get into the specifics of what I'm doing each day, let me just kind of give you my overall plan, part of which I have adapted from the Fly Lady and part of which I have adapted from the Sidetracked Home Executives, who are Pam Young and Peggy Jones. So the Fly Lady uh, suggests making a theme for each day. So that is what I have done, and I have been doing this for a long time. I don't always follow it, but I just recently went and updated my daily sheets and themes to fit my life currently and that is done and I am following that. I have thought of a couple of other things that I need to add to or take away to tweak it but uh, I'm happy with what I have gotten there in my updates. 
Also, I do the fly zones, and this is something I got from Fly Lady, where she takes one week, um, she breaks her house down into zones, and each week of the month, she focuses on a different zone. Now, that's not the only thing she does, but she does some extra jobs in each zone each week. So, I changed my zones a little bit to fit my house. I used to try to do her zones like she does, but that doesn't fit my house. So I just recently typed up a new zone plan. Now I have not been successful at doing the zones very often in my life since I've been doing Fly Lady because I didn't adapt my zones for myself. Now I think I'm going to be more successful because I have my own zones. Some of them still mirror the Fly Ladies, but these include all of the rooms from my house that I need to deal with, and I think it's going to work a lot better. So that's the Fly Lady portion of my life plan right now. And okay, so I want to show you my card file box. Now, it's kind of a mess <laughs> because I did not purchase dividers. I just made my own. And I did follow some of Pam and Peggy's plan. And then, like I said, I adapted it to fit me and my personality. So let me just show you what I'm doing so far. And again, I am tweaking this daily. This is not how it's going to be forever. I have no illusions that I'm going to be able to keep up with this long term. But... For right now, it's worth a try, and it is helping me to get and stay a little better organized and get a few things done around my house, and perhaps I will be able to have some new routines that will be able to stick with me long term. So one of the things that they recommend doing is making a 3 by 5 card of your weekly plan and putting that in your lid. So this basically mirrors the themes that I chose for each day and I mostly don't refer to this. I just refer to the plan in my notebook but at least I've got it here so that in case I forget what my theme is for the day it's right there. So I made dividers for um, every day of the month and also two sets of weekdays and then one set of uh, dividers for uh, each month of the year and then I've got some space in the back for extra cards and for my meal cards and things like that which I'll get into in a minute and I bought a set of cards that had four different colors I also had some white cards on hand so for now the system that I have loosely adopted is these yellow cards are my daily jobs things that I do every day are on the yellow cards the pink cards are my weekly jobs things that I want to do weekly and then the green cards are <laughs> my jobs that I will do sporadically sometimes it's every other day sometimes it's one day a month whatever and then the white cards are my food cards and then I'm using orange for dividers and also I have a few extras of these that I cut off and so I'm using these for kind of extra to do's sometimes you know things come up that need to get done and it's nothing I'm ever going to need to do again but I need to have it done by a certain day so I will go ahead and write it on one of these little cards and if it needs to be done today then it'll have a you know to do today or if I need to have it done by a certain time I'll you know a certain other day of the week or month I'll put it with that day. So that's just a way to, you know, utilize some of these little uh, pieces of paper that I have left. You could also use post-it notes, other scrap paper, or whatever if you wanted to not use a 3x5 card for something that you're going to just throw away or recycle. So let me just kind of show you, first of all, how I made my dividers. Oh, well, okay. So now this is yesterday. So I wanted to just kind of tell you how it works for me and how it's been working on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's already afternoon, but I went back and sort of reset my box 
how I looked when I got up this morning. Because you still see here Saturday the 14th. Well, today is Sunday the 15th. And there's still a few cards here in front of Saturday. So here was exercise. Well, I didn't do any definite exercise. I did do a little bit. I was pretty exhausted by the end of yesterday. But uh, I never did move the card to the next day because I really didn't do the exercise that I intended to. Now, this says every other day. So I'm going to move this to Monday. I'm going to move it in front of Monday. Because I have another green card that says exercise with Emily. And I've got that on Sunday. Every other day is exercise with Emily. So I have not successfully done that. Um, but that's my plan. So I have it in here, the things that I want to do. Not necessarily the things that I have been doing. But I'm working on it. It's a goal. Goals are great, right? Okay, so then my theme for Saturdays is to do eBay, photograph my items for the next week, to prep and clean items um, for the next week. Really, that should go in the other order. You have to prep and clean them and then photograph them. So uh, they're in the wrong order, but, you know, I knew what I meant. Anyway, I did not get that done yesterday. I had a homeowner's meeting for our property in the morning, and then I did go to a couple of yard sales. I didn't buy anything to resell, so I, I was good. But then uh, we had a few other errands that we did, and by the time we got home, I was just exhausted, and I did not get this done. So I am going to, instead of moving this to next Saturday, I'm going to move this to Sunday, to today. After I get done with this video... I am going to go out to the garage and I am going to try to at least prep a few things for next week because I need to have some things to list. And normally I wouldn't on a Sunday. Normally everybody's home. Well, Katie's been having to work lately on Sundays, but usually Randy's home. But he had to work today, so it's just Emily and me and I thought, and I just thought I would go ahead and not stick with my plan today and just go ahead and do this video while I was thinking about it. But I still need to get some eBay stuff ready for the next week. Okay, so then this is my evening routine card. Um, I give Emily her medicine at 8.30. This is just kind of, you know, the last things I need to check on before I go to bed. You know, is there any dishes left in the sink? Do I need to start the dishwasher? Have I put away all the laundry? It's always good to clear the dining table, pick up clutter, you know, the dog toys that the dogs have played with, that kind of thing. So I don't usually end up moving this card until the next day, but these are just things that I'm, routines that I'm trying to establish and things that I want to do before I go to bed. So now, I will move this to the last card on Sunday. And then that leaves me with yesterday's date and yesterday's day of the week. So, I'm going to go back here to um, the next uh, place where I need a Saturday divider, which is the 28th of May, and put Saturday there. And then I'm going to take the 14th and I'm going to move it back here to June. And I'm going to put it right here. Hard to do that with just one hand. Okay, so now I am, uh, after I've done that, when I get up in the morning, then these are my routines. Now, I sometimes don't even open my box until I have gotten most of these done because these are just... Things that I already know that I need to do. Most of these things on these two cards are things that I have already established as routines. But I do like to have them written down so that when I'm pretty much done with these things, I can go back and say, did I get everything done? A very early morning routine is to get up at 6.30 and I give myself until 8.30 to just enjoy my time to uh, reading. I do my Bible study and scripture reading and then any other time I have left, 
I will do some reading just for fun. Uh, before I sit down to read, though, I put a pot of coffee on, and then while that's brewing, I go and feed all the pets because, I mean, as soon as I get up, they're wanting to eat. <laughs> and uh, then I can sit down and enjoy that. Now, sometimes the rest of the family are up and leaving, and, and Emily's up, and she's ready for attention before 8.30. So if I get a lot of interruptions, I will let myself go ahead and read past 8.30 if I have time. But my general plan is at 8.30, put the book down, give Emily her medicine, take my own medicine, vitamins, things like that. And then we need to get dressed. And while we're dressing, one of the things that I try to do that I did get from Fly Lady is to swish and swipe the bathrooms. So after I help Emily get dressed, I wipe down her counter and swish out her toilet. And when I get myself dressed and put my contacts in, I swish and swipe my bathroom. And generally, though, we've already eaten breakfast before we do that. So this is not necessarily the order that I do things in. Uh, in fact, if Emily gets up before 830, I'll go ahead and read her devotion with her. And then we'll come into the kitchen around 8.30, between 8.30 and 9, and do breakfast and medicine. And then we'll go get dressed after that. So this is not necessarily the order of things. I just want to make sure that I get them done. So when I come back and look at this card, and I see, oh, I got dressed, but I didn't swish and swipe my bathroom, I'll run back and do that. So those chores would really go on the next card except that I like to go ahead and try to get them done when I'm getting dressed. But these are my daily household morning chores that I want to be sure I do morning and night or at least the dishes morning and night before I really get into whatever the theme is of the day. Regardless of the day, regardless of you know the theme of the day, Dishes still need to get done. They either need to be cleared out of the sink. They need to be put in the dishwasher or unloaded out of the dishwasher. Or I need to do some hand washing. I mean, I have a certain types of dishes that I don't put in the dishwasher. And so some type of dish work <laughs> needs to be done every day. And so this is just a reminder you know, in the morning, have I checked the dishes? And then also have I put in a load of laundry? And I am trying to get in a really good habit of sweeping my floor, at least some portion of the floor every day. Because we have animals. We have two dogs and five cats and two foster kittens. So there's a lot of animal hair floating around. And the dogs kick up a lot of sand outside. So they track in dirt. And it is really a good idea to sweep every day and I have not been doing it. So lately since I've been doing it every day, I mean I don't sweep under the furniture and do the whole house every day, but I do try to get the high traffic areas and try to catch that dog hair before it gets way up under all the furniture. And then it's just cleaner all around if I can keep that up and out of the floor. So that is my daily chores. So so then I go to whatever my jobs are for the day. So Sunday is normally our day of rest. So I really only have in here um, my daily listing for eBay because I tried to actually launch some listings every day and then exercise with Emily and then my card that I put in here that I should have done yesterday and then my evening household routine, which will, won't be until the evening. So really, I don't have anything else for today um, because I try to keep Sunday mostly free. But then on the other days of the week, I have the laundry that needs to get done. Uh, now, normally I would have a laundry card in here, but I did do Randy's work clothes yesterday since he had to work today. And so those got done late last night. So you have to be adaptable. And that's the cool thing about the cards. You can move them to whatever day you want to do them. And if a job doesn't get done today, it can get moved to tomorrow or it can just get moved to next week. It's really fine. And it's up to you. You put it where you want to do it. You tell these cards where you want them to go. Now, one of the things that 
I have done that has really just been a life changer is figuring out what I'm going to cook and what days I'm going to cook them. And this has only been going on for a couple of weeks now, but it has been life-changing. I am telling you, cooking is not my favorite thing to do. I don't like planning it. I don't like doing it. I don't really like anything about cooking except eating it. And so what I have started doing is one of my days of the week. Well, okay, let me, I need to plug my phone in and then I'm going to come back and I'm going to tell you about each um, theme of the day and how I incorporate meal planning and grocery shopping into that. All right, it's a couple hours later, and I've been charging my phone. I had to go back and just watch what I'd already filmed so I could kind of remember what I'd already told you and what I hadn't. One thing I realized that I did neglect to do was to show you how I made my dividers. So I just took a regular 3 by 5 card, and then I cut another card into strips and used those strips and just taped them, adjusted them up so that they are you know, higher than the card itself so that I can see the, um, the date. And then I took some more strips and I used those to write the days of the week on. And I used two strips per, um, uh, day. So that way it raises the tab up enough that it is on the same level as the number. And then these I can move as needed as well as these and they're not stuck together so that I can change the days of the week to go with the day of the month. And that is basically what I did and how I made my dividers. I know it would probably look a lot neater to just buy some dividers and I might at some point, but for now this is fine. So Fly Lady suggests having a theme for each day, and I still like to have those on a piece of paper in my notebook. Eventually, I could probably transfer everything onto cards and have them in my box. A lot of the jobs that I have designated for each day are already in the box, but I also just like to see them at a glance. And I do refer to this book at least once a day just to remind myself of what I possibly am doing in any given day. So Sundays, Fly Lady calls it Renew Your Spirit Day. And we are Christians. We do go to church. So we only have a service in the morning. We don't have one in the evening. But I went ahead and put that on there. You know, it's always a struggle to be on time for Sunday school. Sometimes we don't even make it to Sunday school. But again, it's a goal. Sometimes if we're all off or even if we're not, we'll have some kind of a family activity. And the really the number one job of Sunday is to rest. I also have to do Randy's work clothes. I have to wash those because... Typically, he works Tuesday through Saturday, but every once in a while, he does work on Monday. So I try to go ahead and get those washed and ready for the work week. And then, you know, anything else that needs to be prepped for the next day. We also have uh, Schwann's Home Delivery. It's a frozen food delivery that comes every other Monday. And if you order before 11 p.m. on Sunday, then you get uh, your delivery fee waived. So I put that on there just to ask myself, do I need to order anything? Do I want to order anything? And then at the bottom of each sheet, I put other possible activities. So occasionally there may be a meeting after church or in the evening. Um, occasionally there might be a live stream or something that I want to participate in or lead. So uh, I put that on there. And then Monday for Fly Lady, she does Home Blessing Day. I changed that just this time to Tuesday. Now, when I say this time, it had been a few years since I had really utilized this book. And previous to this, Tuesday was my work day. Well, now I am retired from that job. So I am going to make Tuesday my home blessing day and do a lot of housework. That is the day I have designated to get the most housework jobs done. So on Monday, when my husband is generally home from work, that's when we do our budget meeting. We talk about our finances, if we need to 
pay anything or do anything differently uh, as far as that goes. Um, if there's any paperwork that we need to do or sign or mail, we get that done. And so I decided to make that my desk day. And also, that is my best day to sub. I am currently a sub at um, in our county for uh, school. I can sub anywhere from, you know, kindergarten or preschool through high school. I generally prefer high school, and I generally prefer to only sub a half a day if I can find a job. <laughs> Sorry, Emily is making a little bit of noise. Um, and I don't sub every week. But if I'm going to sub at all, Monday is the day the best day to do it generally because Randy's home and he can stay with Emily. So these are just the things that I could possibly do. I want to make that sort of my desk day, go through and recycle papers and, you know, if there's shredding to be done or, you know, whatever. Uh, if I need to write any letters or cards or mail anything, then that Monday is the day to do it. Um, also, that's a good day for appointments. If I have an appointment or I need to make it like a dentist appointment and don't want to take Emily with me, I try to do those on Mondays so that Randy's home with her. And so that is uh, there. And then these are just some uh, what Flay Lady calls home blessing tasks and for me, the jobs that I want to do. And something I put on every Tuesday and Friday along with my housework is to do a zone cleaning job. So um, I can't remember if I already showed you the zones, but I want to pick one or two jobs in the current zone based on the calendar and do a job in that zone on Tuesdays and on Fridays. Also, I have a chore jar, and those are basically just some decluttering tasks that I need to do. And so I haven't done it yet, but I do want to every Tuesday and Friday pull out a job, a decluttering job, and they're anywhere from five to 30 minute jobs. They're not long jobs. And if they are, then I've broken them down into 30 minute increments. And that is my goal for Tuesdays and Thursdays. So then Wednesday is my YouTube day. I am in a live stream every Wednesday with my reseller friend, uh, the Rebel Reseller. So I figure if I'm going to put on makeup for the live stream, I may as well film my own videos that day as well. So far, I've only been able to do one video per Wednesday, and I usually need to do two or three per week. So that explains part of the reason I'm doing this one today on a Sunday. But We'll, we'll see how it works out. Uh, Thursdays is errand day. And so this is the day that I have designated to do my grocery shopping, which means that in order to have a complete grocery list, I have to plan my menus for the week, either the night before or Thursday morning before leaving the house. And I sat down with some vegan cookbooks because I try to cook vegan meals now since Katie is vegan and Randy is vegetarian, almost vegan. <laughs> so um, I decided that I would cook on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. Randy fasts on Saturdays, Sundays we can have leftovers, and on Wednesdays we eat at church. So my goal is to cook four nights a week. So I sit down and I plan those menus for those four nights. And what I have done then in my card file, the... Um, the recipes that I have so far implemented, I made copies and put them on these cards. And then whatever recipe I'm going to make any given day, I put it in that day. So if, I, if it's something I'm going to cook that I don't need a recipe for, then I have also made some cards for various meals like enchiladas or baked potatoes, burgers, things like that. And so I will insert those cards in the appropriate day. And I have been shopping with my list, and it's been going great so far. Also, Thursdays, uh, two Thursdays of the month, I have book club, and I have just started volunteering at our new Historical Society Museum from 10 to 2 on Thursdays. I've only done it once, and I had to make sure I got my menus planned the night before so that I was ready to go grocery shopping 
after book club and, uh, and I did it. So, um, I actually had, uh, I wasn't, um, I actually didn't have to stay quite as long at the museum as I thought I would. So I was able to squeeze in my grocery shopping before book club and uh, it worked out great. So that is my plan for Thursdays to do errands. And um, then Friday is a half a day cleaning, which basically, you know, touch up the things that um, maybe I didn't get done on Tuesday. Also, I want to do another zone cleaning task and a decluttering project from the jar and um, check the cat litter, clean the pet dishes. You know, those need to be done every so often. And as usual, sweep, um, including mopping on Fridays. So I'm trying to sweep every day and then mop twice a week. And then the other half of the day I can spend doing projects, whatever I need to do. Maybe it's a cleaning task. Maybe it's something fun. Maybe it's a film another video, whatever. I, I'm, I am still a free spirit when it comes down to it. And I need some time that I can just do what I feel like doing. And so that's my plan for Friday. Sorry about the dogs. And then Saturday is my eBay processing day, clean out the garage day, that kind of thing. And then um, I think I already showed you the zones. These are adapted from the Fly Lady zones, but I have changed them to fit my own needs. And basically this covers our whole house except for Katie's bedroom and bathroom. She takes care of that herself. And, um, everything else is under my jurisdiction. <laughs> so, uh, these are my zones. So that's really about all that I wanted to share with you at this point. Um, let me know if you have any organizational systems or decluttering systems or anything, or if you've ever tried either the fly lady or the sidetracked home executives and uh, what you thought about them. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you.